The following is an excerpt from the Zero X video, 12 instructional videos. In this five hour video collection, we cover a series of drills to help your breaking, ball pocketing, eight ball and nine ball, along with recovery shots and safeties. Available as a DVD or digital download, this video also comes with five eBooks. In the following video, we're gonna go through eight ball drills that my students perform to help them improve their eight ball patterns. We start off with three ball patterns and as the player improves their pattern recognition, we keep adding more balls. In this video, we're gonna go through several eight ball patterns. Each pattern will have its own timer, so you'll have a limited time in figuring out each run out. We'll start off with three ball patterns and we'll work our way up to six ball patterns. Then we're going to examine a few professional eight ball runouts and go through a few tips that should help your eight ball game. So if you're ready, let's get started. Before we begin the time patterns, here are a few tips you can use when trying to figure out the runouts. If your runout leaves you in a situation like this where you have to travel the length of two or three diamonds to end up in your position area, you may want to rethink your pattern. The exception would be if the cue ball were traveling toward the next ball at the correct angle. For instance, in this layout, I'm going to be pocketing the two ball and traveling to the middle of the table. Even though I'll be traveling the length of four diamonds, the cue ball is traveling along the correct angle to the one ball. So if I under hit the cue ball, I would still have the correct angle on the one ball. In this example, I'll be drawing the cue ball back for my angle on the two ball. Since my position area is small and I'm traveling the length of three diamonds, ending up in my position area is going to be very difficult. But as we just mentioned, if you're traveling toward your next ball at the correct angle, your position window is much larger. For example, in this layout, I'll be pocketing the ball and traveling toward my next object ball at the correct angle. So my position window is rather large. Try to avoid patterns where the cue ball has to land on the object ball's pocket line. For instance, in this pattern, we're going to be pocketing the two ball and trying to land on the one ball pocket line so we can roll forward for the eight ball. Since we're traveling over three feet, trying to land on the pocket line takes very precise speed control. It won't take much to end up on either side of the pocket line. If you do choose a pattern where you have to land on a pocket line for a specific ball, try to make sure that there's a ball nearby, like the five ball in this example, that will make it easy to end up straight in on your object ball. When playing position, look for patterns where the positional shots don't require precise speed control. For instance here, we need to end up on this side of the one ball pocket line. So unlike when we had to land on the pocket line here, we have a little room for error. A good rule of thumb is that you always want to minimize the cue ball's travel. The farther you have to travel, the less chance there is that you're going to end up in your position window. Now the exception would be in situations like this where the angle does most of the work for you as far as moving the cue ball toward your position window. In this shot, all I have to do is softly roll in the 7 ball and the cue ball will naturally travel to the bottom side rail. And the last tip is to look at which balls are connected with each other. For example, in this layout, the three, five, and six ball are all connected, which means we don't have to do very much with the cue ball to pocket the three and five ball, leaving us with position on the six ball. At this angle in the six ball, the cue ball will head toward the in rail, giving us our angle on the one ball that will send the cue ball toward the seven ball at the correct angle. Before we begin, let's go through a sample pattern so you can see how this works. Before we show you the pattern, we're going to have the difficulty level of the pattern along with the skill level needed 
To complete this pattern on your own table, patterns with a low difficulty level like this one will have shorter timers. The goal is to determine the best way to run out the pattern before the timer expires. This sort of training forces the player to go through their analyzation at a much faster pace, which over time will improve their analyzation speed when playing in tournaments or leagues. If you're a beginner, then you can simply pause the video and take your time as you go through each pattern. So let's begin with the first pattern. The goal in this pattern is to pocket the 5-ball and end up near the 4-ball pocket line. When pocketing the 4-ball, we need to create an angle on the 2-ball that will help move the cue ball toward the middle of the table. So an angle like this on the 2-ball would be much better than an angle like this. In this pattern, the goal is to create an angle on the 7 ball that will help send the cue ball to the other half of the table. At this angle, a soft stroke with a touch of right spin will send the cue ball toward the top side rail for shape on the 2 ball. When you have balls together like this, always look for patterns where there is minimal cue ball movement. For instance, in this pattern, the 6, 5, and 2 ball are all connected, which simplifies cue ball positioning, allowing for a greater chance of running out. The two ball would be a good key ball to get on the eight ball. We could shoot the three ball and end up with this angle in the seven ball, which will send the cue ball toward the two ball. A slightly better option is to pocket the seven ball and land near the three ball pocket line. This option is slightly better since after pocketing the three ball, we don't have to do too much to have our position on the two ball. In this run out, we have one problem ball, the 5 ball, so we'll be shooting this ball first. If we examine the 4 and 1 ball, it looks like they're connected. If we can end up on the 4 ball pocket line for the side pocket, it won't take much to end up at the correct angle for the 1 ball. In this shot, I'll be sending the cue ball toward a target on the top side rail. Sending the cue ball to this rail helps open up our position window. When we shoot the 4 ball, we need to make sure we stay above the 1 ball pocket line.
In this pattern, the 4 and 3 ball are connected, and the 3 ball would be an excellent key ball to get on the 8 ball. If we can pocket the 7 ball and land on or close to the 1 ball pocket line, it won't take much to get our position on the 4 ball. Even though the 3 ball is closest to the 8 ball, we're probably not going to use it for our key ball since it's limited to just one corner pocket. Now if the 4 ball were here, we would definitely be using the 3 ball as our key ball. If we examine the 4, 6, and 7 ball, we can see that all 3 are connected. So the key to this pattern is pocketing the 3 ball and landing on or very close to the 4 ball pocket line. In this pattern, we'll be using the 6 ball as the key ball. The 2 and 1 ball are connected, so we'll start with these two balls first. When we pocket the 1 ball, we're going to create a high angle in the 5 ball that will send the key ball toward the middle of the table. In this pattern, we're going to use the 4 ball as the key ball. Since the 4 ball is our key ball, we can see that the 7 and 1 ball are now connected. Which means if we can pocket the 3 ball and end up on the 7 ball pocket line, it won't take much to pocket the 7 and 1 ball, leaving us an angle that we can use to get on the 4 ball. In this pattern, we could use the 3 ball as the key ball. In order to use the 3 ball as the key ball, we need a good setup ball that we can use to get on the 3 ball. We could shoot the 7 and 6 ball and end up on the 4 ball pocket line, which will give us the angle we need for the 3 ball. While this pattern works, if we look at the pattern, we can see that all 4 balls connect with each other if we start with the 3 ball.
In the previous pattern, we had to pocket the six ball and land on the four ball pocket line, which required pretty good speed control. In this pattern, when we pocket the six ball, our position window for the eight ball is very large. In this pattern, we need to find which balls connect with each other. It looks like the 7 and 2 ball are connected and the 3 and 6 ball are connected. If we pocket the 7 ball and stun the cue ball toward the 2 ball, it won't take much to draw back a few inches, giving us shape for the 3 ball. In this pattern, it looks like the 6 and 5 ball are connected with each other. If we can pocket the 6 and 5 ball, we can then use the 7 ball to get on our key ball, the 3 ball. In this pattern, we have a problem ball with the five ball. If we look at the pattern, it looks like if we end up on or near the one ball pocket line from the five ball, it won't take much to pocket the one, six, three, and seven ball. So the key to this pattern is pocketing the five ball and ending up on or near the one ball pocket line. We could stun the cue ball off the five ball toward the pocket line, but this requires excellent speed control. A better option is to use high action to send the cue ball off the bottom side rail and toward the one ball. When attacking patterns like this, you first need to decide which half of the table you're going to begin your run. If we started with the 5 and 6 ball, we may run into an issue when it comes time to get on the 8 ball. But if we examine the pattern, we can see that the 5 and 6 ball are connected with each other if we save them for last. Meaning if we pocketed the 5 ball, we would automatically have an angle in the 6 ball that we can use to get on the 8 ball. Knowing this, we now need to figure out the best way to pocket the other three solids and end up on or near the five ball pocket line. Right away, we can see that if we pocket the two ball in the side pocket, we'll have automatic shape on the five ball. So we'll pocket the one ball, leaving us a natural angle to get on the two ball. At this angle, we can softly roll in the two ball 
and we'll have our shape on the five ball. In this pattern, it looks like the two ball may be a good ball to use as a key ball. If we examine the five and six ball, we can pocket the five ball leaving a high angle on the six ball, which will send the key ball toward the two ball. Now we need to determine the best way to pocket the seven and one ball and get on the five ball. If we can pocket the seven ball and end up on or close to the one ball pocket line, we can then follow the key ball to the top side rail for our shape on the five ball. In this pattern, we have an issue with the one ball if we don't shoot it right away. In this pattern, it doesn't look like any of the balls are connected. But if we make the six ball the key ball, now we can see that the four and three are connected. Since if we pocket the four ball, we'll have our angle in the three ball that will take the key ball to the bottom side rail for the six ball. So the key to unlock in this pattern is figuring out the best way to pocket the one and five ball and end up on or near the four ball pocket line. If we pocket the one ball in the corner and follow the cue ball to the end rail, we should have a natural angle on the five ball that will send the cue ball toward the four ball. In this pattern, we need to decide which half of the table to start on. We could start with the six and four ball, but we would have to make sure we create an angle in the five ball that we can use to get on the three ball. If we pocket the five, three, and one ball, we can then shoot the four ball, leaving a nice shot on the six ball to get on the eight ball. An angle like this in the one ball will send the cue ball to the middle of the table near the four ball pocket line.
In this pattern, the five ball would be a good key ball if there is a good pattern that leads to it. One mistake players sometimes make is to select what appears to be a good key ball and then try to force a run out around this ball. If we examine this pattern, we can see that if we pocket the one ball and end up on or near the four ball pocket line, the four, three, five, and six are all connected. So a good key ball in this pattern would be the six ball. Now at this angle, it won't take much to pocket the six ball and end up in the middle of the table. 